Hajj, the pillar of Islam. Hajj, the pillar of Islam. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya wal Mursaleen. اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاه والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى اليك واصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاه والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى اليك واصحابك يا نور الله ويلكم باك تو اور بروجرام الحمد لله حج دا بيلر اوف اسلام الحمد لله عز وجل اف يو كان ريمبر ان دا بريفيس ابيسودز we were talking about the importance of hajj and also we were talking about the blessings of the beautiful cities of makkah al mukarrama and madinah al munawwara today a new topic inshallah so we will be talking about and today we're going to be talking about the lessons of qurbani what lessons do we learn from the sacrifice that we give on the 10th of zil hijjah throughout the world muslims alhamdulillah sacrifice an animal in honor to celebrate and to follow the sunnah of the prophet of allah sayyiduna ibrahim ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam and sayyiduna ismail ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam but what are lessons do we learn from this sacrifice what lesson do we learn from this very beautiful and famous incident throughout history inshallah azawajal that's the lesson we're going to try to learn what we are alhamdulillah as we're going to watch this program but before we do anything let's start off with the blessing of reciting durood and salam upon the beloved messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam there's a very uh, beautiful hadith quoted in mu'jam awsat in which uh, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said whoever recites durood upon me his durood reaches me and then i make dua for him and allah azza wa jalla reward him with 10 extra good deeds as well it's a beautiful way of earning good deeds a beautiful way to get close to our rabb azza wa jalla is to recite durood upon the final messenger of allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam now if you remember that uh, Zul Hijjat al Haram is that blessed month in which Muslims we celebrate Eid al Adha but we also give a sacrifice a qurbani in the way of Allah Azza wa Jalla for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jalla why do we give qurbani what lessons do we learn from the qurbani let's start off with that dream of Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam Uh, in this month on the 8th night of zil hijjat al haram he sees a dream in which he is ordered by allah azza wa jal to sacrifice his one and only son sayyiduna ismail ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam and then this dream happened on the 9th night as well and the 10th night as well so on the 10th day sayyiduna ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam he goes to his son and he explains the dream to him and he says my son this is the dream i had it is a command from allah azza wa jal and it says about sayyiduna ismail alayhi salatu was salam in return what he replies to his uh, beloved father sayyiduna ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam allah azza wa jal has mentioned in surah as-saffat verse number 102 When Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam he said that I saw a dream in which I am sacrificing Ismail alayhi salatu was salam in return he says qala ya aba tif'al ma tu'mar satajiduni insha Allah min as-sabirin translation from kanzul iman the son said o oh my father do what you are being commanded allah willing it is soon that you will find me patient yani you will find me patient you will not find me crying or arguing over this i will be patient for the sake of allah azza wa jal so then what happens in tafsir al khazin is mention that sayyiduna ismail alayhi salatu was salam he says to sayyiduna uh, ibrahim alayhi salam that oh my beloved father before you sacrifice me 
what you need to do is tie me with a string, with a rope. And why? Because I don't want my hands to be, you know, uh, at that time when I'm being slaughtered out of pain, I don't want to be making any move. And then he says, Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salatu was salam, he says that I don't want my blood to be splattered on your clothes. So therefore tie my hands and my feet as well. And then also put, uh, make me blindfolded because I do not want to look at you and maybe you will look at me as well. And then, you know, you might not do the qurbani that Allah Azza wa has commanded you to do. So Ismail alayhi salatu was salam, he has given this tasalli. He has given this to his father that you will not find me say anything. I will be patient in the will of Allah Azza wa Take my kameez and give it to my mother so that she can find solace and sabr from this as well. And Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, he says in reply, O oh my son, Allah Azza wa Jal ke hukum par amal karne mein mere kaise umda madadgar sabit ho rahe ho. That you know, you are assisting me in such a beautiful manner to fulfill the command of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then Sayyiduna Ismail alayhi salatu wa salam was laid onto the ground. And then what happened is that he, he, start, he tried to um, move the knife on his uh, throat. But Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal, with the command of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah sent Dumba, you know, an animal. Dumba is like a, it's a sheep family. So he was sent from paradise to the world. And instead of Ismail alayhi salatu was salam, he sacrificed the animal. And then when Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam opened his eyes, he was shocked to see that there was an animal under his knife. And Ismail alayhi salatu was salam was sat next to him. So, Hazrat Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, he says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, when he opened his eyes and he saw the animal, he says, La ilaha illallahu, Wallahu Akbar. And Ismail alayhi salatu was salam, he says, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. Subhanallah. Now, this sacrifice of Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was only for them. The dream of a prophet is a form of wahi and it is the truth that he sees in the dream. Now if any other father in the world now sees a dream that he is sacrificing his son, then that dream will not be acted upon. But subhanallah azza wa jal, this is what you call takbir tashriq is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd. And the method of Takbir Tashriq and some of the rulings have been written in one of the booklets that Amir Ali Sunnah has written, Namaz Eid Ka Tariqa. The method of Eid Salah is available in English, in Urdu, in many, many other different languages as well. So please, I do request you to have that book, the method of Eid Salah. It's just not a method of how to offer your Eid Salah, it's a complete guide as to how we should. Uh, be on Eid day as well, inshallah Azza wa Jal. Now, Sayyiduna Ismail alayhi salatu was salam was so obedient to his father. He could have turned around and said that, you know, dad, you know, I'm the only son. Why are you going to sacrifice me? But what did he say? Satajiduni insha'allahu minas sabirin. That you will find me, that I will be patient. Subhanallah. So this is how he supported the dream of his father. And until the day of judgment, every Muslim that comes to this world, and inshallah, Azawajal will do qurbani on the 10th of Zil Hijjat al Haram, will be following Sunnah of Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. But here, my dear Islam brothers and viewers of Madani channel, there's a very important thing for us to remember that Sayyiduna Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. He, for him, followed the command of his father. In return, he didn't say anything, he didn't argue with him, he didn't run away, because he knew the status of his father. And subhanAllah, because he was also a prophet of Allah Azza wa Now, Qurbani, why do we do Qurbani? What is it? Why do Muslims shed blood of an animal or sacrifice an animal every year? One of the reasons 
is to attain taqwa and to attain the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is how we do the Qurbani. And Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal, we follow the tradition of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. And also this tradition was carried on by our beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal, as Muslims, we need to follow the sunnahs of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We need to follow the sunnahs of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. And the only intention we should have when we do give qurbani is for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Not so that, you know, I'm going to give the best bakra, I'm going to give the best sacrifice. In a sense, my sacrifice is going to be very expensive. I can show to people that, look, this is how much I've spent on my sacrifice. That is in the court of Allah. It's not money or the value of money that is accepted. It is the blood that is shed for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal. There is a verse inside the glorious Qur'an, uh, Surah Al-Hajj, uh, verse number 37. The translation of Kanzul Iman, Neither their flesh nor their blood ever reaches Allah. Yes, your piety reaches Him. So it's not the blood of the animal, it's not the meat of the animal that reaches Allah. It is your piety, it is your intention that reaches Allah Azza wa So we need to make sure that whenever we do qurbani, whenever we organize a sacrifice, then it is only for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ تو تم اپنے رب کے لیے نماز پڑھو وَفَدَ الصَّلَا فِي يَوْ رَبْ and give sacrifice or qurbani do surat al-kawthar. Now Imam Fakhruddin Razi rahmatullahi ta'ala he says, that the Hanafi ulama derived the ruling from this that Qurbani is wajib. And Hazrat Alama Sayyid Mahmud Alusi Baghdadi, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, he says, is baat par muttafiq hai. The majority of the ulama is baat par muttafiq hai. They agree ke nahar se murad Qurbaniyu ka zibah karna hai. That when the word nahar fasali li rabbi ka wan har, yeah, and the word nahar is what he means by qurbani. Or baaz ne wujub e qurbani par isaad se istidlal kiya hai. And some of the scholars have taken out uh, the, the ruling that qurbani is wajib. Subhanallah azza wa jal. Beautiful hadiths regarding qurbani. What does our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say regarding the qurbani? Let's take the first hadith. The first hadith, alhamdulillah azza wa jal, from Jami' Tirmazi. In, the, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions Qurbani karne wale ko qurbani ke janwar ke har baal ke badle mein ek neki milti hai. That a person who sacrifices an animal for sacrifice for every hair, Allah azza wa jal rewards that person with one good deed. In another hadith book it says in Majam Kabir, Jisne khush dili se talib sawab ho kar qurbani ki. The one who gives qurbani with the intention of pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal, khush dili se, not because I've got to do it, I've got to spend this money. No, out of happiness, whoever does qurbani, wo atish e jahannam se rok ho jayegi. That qurbani, that sacrifice he gives will be a barrier between him and the fire of hell. In other hadith uh, quoted in Sunan Kubra al-Bahaki, it says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ay Fatima, apni qurbani ke baas mojood roho, kyunke iske khun ka pehla katra girega, tumhare saare guna mu'af kar diye jayenge. So he says, he's addressing his blessed daughter, Sayyida Tayyiba Tahira, Sayyida Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, that, oh Fatima, stay with your qurbani, because the first drop of blood that falls, it will be a means of your forgiveness of your sins. Now obviously, alhamdulillah, we know that our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's all his family, companions, alhamdulillah, they're all destined to go to paradise. So here, we find that whenever we give qurbani, we stay with our qurbani and we try to be there if possible. So if you're giving qurbani overseas, and alhamdulillah, like uh, many years, Dawat Islami has been doing collective qurbani for the people overseas and even in Pakistan as well. And one of the reasons is that alhamdulillah, our qurbani is given in the best way and the best form under the guidance of alhamdulillah, Sharia compliant scholars. So that anything that happens, any qurbani that is given, 
given. Alhamdulillah, the scholars will guide the people as well. In another hadith in, uh, quoted in Jami'a Tirmazi again, it says, A person does not do any better deed on the days of Qurbani than shedding blood of an animal. Ye Qurbani Qiyamat mein apne singu, balu, khuru aur ke saath aayegi. Yani this Qurbani will come on the day of judgment with his hooves, with his uh, horns, and also with his hair as well. Qurbani ka khun zameen par girne se pehle Allah ke haan kubool ho jata hai. Before the blood reaches to the ground, Allah Azza wa Jal accepts that. Lehaza khush dili se qurbani karo. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Therefore, give qurbani in a good mood, in a happy mood. Hazrat Allama Shaykh Abdul Haq Muhaddi say, Delvi, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. He says, Qurbani apne karne wale ki nekiyun ke pelle mein rakhi jayegi. When you give qurbani, it will be put into the, 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 the weighing on the weighing scale on the side of the good deeds. Jis se nekiyun ka palara bari ho jayega. And because of that, the, the, the weighing scale on the, on the good side will become more heavier. Hazrat Allama Ali Qari Rahmatullahi Alayhi says, Phir is ke liye suwari banegi. It will become a means of transport for that person. Jis ke zariye, ye shaks ba asani pul sirat guzar jayega. That a person through this qurbani, he will cross the bridge of sirat will ease. Alhamdulillah, azza wa jal. Aur is janwar ka har uzv, malik ke har uzv ka fidya banega. Yani every part of this qurbani will become a means of forgiveness of sins of the owners, every part of his body as well. Subhanallah. So now we know that the qurbani that we give is not only to eat meat, that the qurbani we give is for the pleasure of Allah. It makes our sins forgive. Alhamdulillah, Allah Azzawajal is pleased with that person. It will become a means of transport. It will become a barrier between us and the fire of hell. Now Alhamdulillah Azzawajal. So whenever we do qurbani, we do it enthusiastically. We do it with passion, with jazba, with love, and for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. Remember, not doing the qurbani is a sin, in which, let me mention to you, in Ibn Majah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has quoted has been saying, Jis shakhs mein qurbani karne ki wusa'at ho, a person who has the means, the necessary, and the, he, he can perform the qurbani, پھر بھی وہ قربانی نہ کرے but he still does not give قربانی تو وہ ہماری عید گاہ کے قریب نہ آئے that person should not come close to our place of عید you know so that is a very very uh, stark warning for those people who don't give their قربانی people don't know the rulings of قربانی so that's why it's important to educate ourselves we need to understand these rulings we need to know these rulings how do we distribute the قربانی how do we give قربانی where do we give the قربانی all of these are things that we need to understand and learn now these people they have the means but they still don't do قربانی اول these people will be in loss because they have been deprived from acting upon this beautiful sunnah and a chance to earn rewards and to save themselves from the fire of hell. Niz Qurbani ke Hamid ka andaza is baad se lagaya ja sakta hai that from this that we can understand the importance of Qurbani. Agar Qurbani wajibu lekin paise nahi to karz le kar Qurbani kare. You have to take a loan and to buy the qurbani and to give that as well. Now it doesn't mean that I don't have the money so that I don't have to give qurbani. We've got cars maybe parked outside our house that's worth thousands. Yeah, we'll have so many unwanted items at home that we don't need. Showpieces, you know, wardrobes and anything, TVs and screens and all these kind of stuff. And we don't really need them. You know, they're more than our, our necessity. But then what will happen? I don't have money. But if, you, if qurbani is wajib upon you and you don't have money at that time, then what will happen? You have to borrow money from someone to give qurbani as well. And then it says, Jis shakhs par shari usulu ke mutabi qurbani wajib hai. If qurbani is wajib upon that person, according to the rulings of sharia, us par qurbani se mutalik masail seekhna bhi lazmi hai. 
then it's important that we learn the rulings of Qurbani as well. Now, in today's day and age, yes, we've got enough time to spend on social media. We've got enough time to stay with our friends. We've got plenty of time to cruise with our mates and our boys. The only the time we don't get is to learn and to understand our deen. Yes, alhamdulillah, I'll spend money here, there and everywhere. I'll spend money on holidays. I'll spend money buying, you know, useless things that don't benefit me or my deen or my hereafter. But when it comes to Qurbani, we shy off and we say we don't get money. You know, Qurbani But we spend loads of money on other stuff as well. Now, this is the society that we are living in. And it's very important that we try to change our fault. So it's very important. You can't just say, it's not my fault, I don't have the money. Yes, Islam is not strict. If you don't have money, you can borrow money from someone. That's only if Qurbani is wajib. If it's not wajib upon you, then you don't have to give Qurbani. But if it's wajib, you don't have the means at that time to give, you know, to buy a Qurbani, then you have to take a loan from someone as well. And there's another beautiful uh, booklet, High Bold Horse Rider, Ablak Gore Suwar. Try to read that as well. Inshallah, Azul is full of rulings of Qurbani and other important uh, in knowledge that inshallah we can learn from in the Qurbani as well. Shaykh Tariqa Tabir al Sunnah in that booklet, Pie Bold Horse Rider, he mentions Qurbani ka gosh khud bhi kha sakta hai, dusre shaks maldar ya fakir ko de sakta hai. So the meat of Qurbani, you can eat yourself and you can give it to others as well. And then the Sunnah Tariqa that we hear from the scholars or the mustahab action is that we should divide it into three. One for our friends, our family, ourselves, one for our relatives, our friends, and then one part, one uh, hissa should be for those people who are in need as well. Now this is according to Fatawai Razviya Sharif, subhanAllah. So it's another opportunity for us so that Alhamdulillah, we are, you know, we gain blessings from that as well. Now a question poses that um, should we give our qurbani to non-Muslims? And the, the fatwa that was given was inhe qurbani ka gosht dene ki shari jazat nahi. There is no uh, shari permissibility to give the meat to those people who are not Muslims. So inshallah, there's so many beautiful things that we've learned today, alhamdulillah. Now again, you know, if you think that you want to give the whole qurbani away to the people in need, then obviously that is up to you, you can do that as well. Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ko kanu mein sab se zyada gosht pasand tha. So meat is one of the uh, most beloved food of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So alhamdulillah, when you do give qurbani, you get the opportunity to act upon this beautiful sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, many other benefits, health benefits of eating meat as well. But obviously, we do understand that too much of everything is not good. That, that could be anything, food, too much is not good. But Alhamdulillah, Azawajal, where there are many, many other blessings of giving qurbani, there are Alhamdulillah health benefits of eating the meat of the qurbani as well. Now, obviously, like I said, if you eat too much, if you know if it's uh, more than uh, you know what you need or if it's uh, you know too much of everything that will obviously cause harm as well now again alhamdulillah azza wa jal, whenever we give qurbani we should all understand and realize that qurbani is for the pleasure of allah azza wa jal, and not to seek pleasure in people not to seek pleasure in people because we can never ever fulfill the demands of people as well. And Alhamdulillah, as always, Dawat Islami, Alhamdulillah, for the last few years has been giving Qurbani uh, collectively. So if you are watching this program and you have given your Qurbani to Dawat Islami, then inshallah, your Qurbani, you know, rest assured that your Qurbani will be given to the rulings of Sharia and under the guidance of the scholars as well. Now, Alhamdulillah, many people that are going to give Qurbani, you know, in Pakistan, in India, in Bangladesh, or in the Muslim countries, people buy the animal and they, they want to take care of the animal, they will raise it up as well. I know people who buy an animal, you know, when it's small, why? Because when it gets big, they will give sacrifice. So Alhamdulillah, every day 
that you are looking after the animal because it's your qurbani, inshallah, you're going to be rewarded as well. Now, the only problem here in the UK is if you do give qurbani, basically you'll have to give an order. And as far as I know, you have to give an order and they deliver the meat to you. Yeah, so that's your qurbani. Even that, you know, the, the scholars, alhamdulillah, have mentioned that, uh, you know, if qurbani is farz upon you, then, you know, this is an opportunity to share your meat, to share your food with other people who are in need as well. And remember, alhamdulillah, whenever you sacrifice the qurbani, always ask yourself, who am I, why am I sacrificing this animal? You know, you're not just sacrificing an animal, sacrifice your desires. Sacrifice your nafs, sacrifice your greed, and then try to, you know, when you are thinking of putting the knife on the animal's throat, just think to yourself that I am killing my own ego, I am I'm killing my own nafs, I'm killing the shaitan. Inshallah, this way we will fulfill the whole needs of Qurbani. And once, inshallah, we have that in our mind that Qurbani is not just to eat meat or to give meat to people. Qurbani is basically a way that we get close to our Rabb. Every ibadat that we do, be it salah, be it Qurbani, be it fasting in the month of Ramadan, or be it fasting in the wafil in the other months as well, and also uh, to perform hajj to give in charity. Remember, everything is only done for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's done so that we can gain the blessings, we can gain that blessing, we can get close to our Rabbi Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal, inshallah Azza wa Jal, will forgive us as well. Now, there are many, many other things that happen during the Qurbani. People will buy an animal just to show off. And you've seen that on the screens as well. Oh, I, I bought this bear, you know, I bought this animal, bull. You know, and it's cost me five lakh rupees in Pakistan. Why are you telling others for? You know, if you paid for that, alhamdulillah, you don't need to tell anyone how much you paid. You know, just make dua that is accepted in the court of Allah. If you buy an animal for five lakh rupees and that's just to show off in front of people that I've got so much money and I could buy the best animal. You bought the best animal, but that sacrifice will not be accepted because it was not for the pleasure of Allah. It was just to boast. It was just to tell other people as well. And then when you do buy a qurbani, make sure you take care of it. If you are in the subcontinent, you're going there, you're going to spend your qurbani. Make sure you take care of it. It as well. Most of you who are watching, Alhamdulillah Azza wa Dawat Islami, like I mentioned before, those collective qurbanis in Pakistan. If you need to have your qurbani done, then please meet one of the Zimadar Islami brothers or the sisters. They'll collect the money, they'll collect the names, and inshallah Azza wa your qurbani will be given under the supervision of scholars in the mahal of Dawat Islami, in the environment of Dawat Islami, inshallah Azza wa And also, inshallah Azza wa you will gain the rewards as well. What does Dawat Islami Islami benefit from the Qurbani. Dawat Islami benefits with the skin that is going to be sold and whatever money Alhamdulillah we get from that will be spent on the works of Dawat Islami. So indirectly you are doing a Qurbani with Dawat Islami but you are also supporting Dawat Islami's religious works as well. Let me just tell you about the religious works of Dawat Islami. You know so if you give Qurbani inshallah that will be given in your name. You know, you'll please your Rabbi Azza wa you've done your duty, the wajib is on you, lifted from you. But now what you're doing is by giving us permission from the meat, uh, for, the, for especially the skin, inshallah, as well, you are also supporting the works of Dawat Islami as well. So please, I'm, I want to uh, take this opportunity to reach out to you that if you wish to give your qurbani, give to Dawat Islami and inshallah we can do the religious works as well. May Allah Azza wa Jal forgive us and may Allah Azza wa Jal forgive our sins and the sins of our parents and all the Muslims and inshallah hope we can do the qurbani according to the shariat and according to the methods that are given written within the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's hadith and also may we find taqwa and that fear of Allah Azza wa Jal in our hearts. Ameen. Bijahin Nabi Ameen sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Hajj, the pillar of Islam. Hajj, the pillar of Islam. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik, Allahumma